A little more organization. As we're being so organized and getting into good habits early on, let's make one more sort of folder before we move on. Right click any blank space in your hierarchy and click create empty. This will create an empty game object called game object. It should already be selected, so head over to the hierarchy and rename it squares. You could theoretically turn this empty game object into any other kind of game object by clicking add component and then choosing the camera component or the sprite renderer, for example. Instead we're keeping it empty, which will let us attach other game objects to it and thereby use it as a makeshift grouping, figure 3 to 18. 54. Figure 3 to 18. Start organizing your hierarchy now and you'll be very glad you did. Drag your two squares from where they are onto your empty game object, and they will now be filed underneath it. The arrow just next to the empty game object will also now allow you to expand and collapse those items. This isn't really necessary at this point, but trust me, when you have 200 collectible coins, 30 enemies, and 700 tiles in your screen, you'll be glad for the organization. One last thing to set up, Snap Grid Settings. In Chapter 4 things are going to get exciting, we're going to add physics to our squares so that they can fall and bounce around, and that's just the start. Before we do that, though, we should handle one more bit of setup and explain one more piece of the UI. You may have noticed that there is a grid in your scene view and wondered what all that was about. This grid is made up of units, which can represent whatever you want them to in order to help you organize your sprites around the screen. What do you call a program full of units? Unity. Okay, this isn't really where the name comes from. Right now, you'll notice that your squares and units bear no relation. To change that, first set the scale X and scale Y on both squares back to 1. Now open up your sprites folder and select the square sprite so that it opens in your inspector, don't just click one of the square game objects, because that won't work. 55. You should notice an option for pixels per unit, which may be set to 100 by default. Change that to 50, don't forget to click apply in the bottom right, and you should find that both squares now immediately change to become the same size as the squares on the grid, as in figure 3 to 19. Remember, when we made these sprites, we made them 50 by 50 pixels. Right now, you'll notice that your squares and units bear no relation. To change that, first set the scale X and scale Y on both squares back to 1. Now open up your sprites folder and select the square sprite so that it opens in your inspector, don't just click one of the square game objects, because that won't work. 55. You should notice an option for...